my God, it's so cool. They were gonna watch like live stream from NASA, which is really cool, but it's a, you can go back and watch it later. Like this, you can't watch this later. Now the sun looks like a moon. You guys, oh my God, it's working. I feel like it's a once in a lifetime thing. So I got him out of school early and anytime I get to spend with him is always a great thing. So the sun kind of looks like a moon. Exactly. And so it's like, oh. It's, it's neat cool. up. But I just bought some black, um, hairspray and sprayed a pair of sunglasses. It works great, you can try them. Happy Eclipse, everybody. It's got worse. Grand Isle Mayor David Carmadell gave us a close-up look at how much tropical storm Cindy devoured of the island's west side. When it hits it, it just caves in, just falls in. You know, it looked like a piece of cake you're cutting off and just falling in a go. Now leaders only hope they can get the work done before another powerful storm takes another swipe. Mid-City flooded twice already, and now with Hurricane Harvey, people are worried that it will flood a third time. That's why they're going to the store, getting food and water. They want to make sure they're ready. They say they'd rather be safe than sorry. 11.53. We're ready. We got two waters. Both of these women were in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, and they tell me they know what a hurricane can do. Harvey isn't expected to hit the city, but it is expected to send a lot of rain. As a kid, you're like I am, where we watch these streetcars go back and forth and back and forth. Did you ever think that you'd be sitting there making this streetcar go? As a kid, no. I never thought that. It's a pleasure for me. Everybody likes that heart pumping, driving feel. Adrenaline junkies. So here's something that'll make your head spin. Those state inspections are only required once a year. The Gravitron passed in February, and Lombardi's incident didn't happen until October. Hey, Kristen, yes, we're here at Orleans and Galvez, where as you can see, we're inside the business here at Treme Restaurant, where you can see there's a lot of standing water, maybe about knee-high water, but take a look out here on Orleans and Galvez. Outside, you can see there's just a plethora of just debris in the streets, of course, because of the high water coming in from that heavy rainfall that we are currently experiencing. How, how are you faring out so far? It's, it's crazy, you know, like I said, two weeks ago when we flooded, it wasn't like this. And it's just weird because it reminds me of Katrina. Where the money going for the water, for the drainage, the sewer, what they're doing uptown? They got a pumping station on Broad Street. Why this not pumping? Ray Lambert, I'm the snare drummer for the Storyville Stompers Brass Band. I started out as an amateur guitarist uh, playing like little garage bands and stuff like that. I finally had a decent summer job one year. Back in the late 60s, well, 69, 70, something like that, and I said, I'm going to buy myself a good left handed guitar. So I busted my behind working a construction job all summer long to save up enough money to buy this thing. And it became my cherished possession after that. You know? yeah, so it's like one day you're sitting fat, and the next day you, you don't know what's going on anymore. The water came up. My house was raised about a foot and a half off the ground, and the water line was like seven foot up in the house. I mean, utter devastation. As you can see, there's a ton of water damage on this thing. All this rust, all this paint is peeling. Everything's just completely corroded. This thing had been sitting uh, in Katrina flood water for a while. I just didn't have the heart to throw it out because I worked so damn long and hard to buy this thing. And I, it still was my first love was the guitars. The good thing this guitar has going for it is that it's not shattered. And so I'm gonna salvage as much of this stuff as I can. We'll look at something like this and most people would say it's a disaster and to, you know, forget about it. And we look at it and go, oh, Neck needs to be put back on, needs to be rewired, you know, needs some fret work. Easy. We love doing this kind of stuff. This is one of the cooler guitars that we've had come through here in a while. It's got battle scars, it's been through hell and high water, and it's lived to tell the tale. 
it's telling us war stories, man. You know, it's uh, it's back from the dead, and uh, it's got its own unique, you know, look and vibe to it now. And uh, it, it's not just another SG; it's an SG submersible. This was just a very violent, violent person, and I can't imagine him doing this one time and not doing it again. Cloaked in anonymity and buoyed by a strength she says she never knew she had, a woman we'll call Mary relives the day that not only scarred her life, but very nearly ended it. It was six months ago on the evening of December 28th. A woman was really sexually assaulted in the 700 block of Patterson Drive on the levee. Mary had moved to Algiers Point four years ago choosing it specifically because it was the safest neighborhood in her price range. An avid jogger, she loved to run along the levee three to four times a week, even at night, because she felt safe. It was lit specifically for night use by joggers and bike riders. Mary would enter the levee at Elmira, jog down to Old Point Bar, turn around and run back. But this night was different. I was running pretty quickly, you know, so I saw him, but I didn't, um, think anything of it. He just looked like a normal person sitting on the bench. The man who would attack her stopped her in her tracks right about here. As she put it, one bench past the Old Point Bar. She said he tackled her from behind with such force she lost her breath, only to lose her ability to scream when he covered her mouth. He dragged her to the water's edge, where at first she thought she was about to be robbed. But then he told her he had a gun and exactly what he planned to do next. He whispered to me that he wanted to, um, you know, sexually assault me. He whispers in your ear what he's about to do. Yeah. Mary struggled to scream, but each time he'd shove her face in the dirt and choke her until she couldn't breathe. But at this point, she could still see. The man on top of her was well-groomed, wearing a white shirt, black shorts, and tennis shoes. He was in his late teens or early 20s, about 5, 8 to 6 feet tall, athletically built, extremely dark complected, and had shoulder length small twists or braids that violently whipped from side to side as he beat her. Mary was about to be sexually assaulted, and though she couldn't scream, she could bite. At the point at which he did overpower me and I couldn't fight back anymore because of that, um, he sexually assaulted me and I saw an opportunity to injure him. And when I did that, um, he became way more violent. Do you think he would have needed medical care? Um, I, I would think that's definitely possible. It was then the attacker's anger turned to rage. He then beat her so badly, metal rods now fit where bones once did. Her eyesight was permanently damaged, and her hip was dislocated. Mary was barely clinging to consciousness when her attacker finally fled. I kept trying to stand up, and I um, couldn't. I kept collapsing back down, and I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out why. And I couldn't crawl either, so I started like dragging myself on my back through the dirt with one hand. Eventually, a jogger heard her screams and came to her rescue, followed quickly by NOPD sex crimes detective Kevin Richardson. This was, this was bad. This is about as bad of, of a crime that can be perpetrated against a person. Police say they canvassed the area for surveillance video, and while Mary got medical care, detectives tried to find out if her attacker did too. We checked urgent cares, clinics, hospitals. We checked everything that we could. And even though Mary's rape kit was processed and some leads were obtained, an arrest has not. She said he was methodical. Are you worried that this guy will do it again? Uh, yes, very much. It's been six months and Mary is on the mend. For personal reasons, she obviously wants justice. But for selfless reasons, she's sharing her story to warn all other women about the well-groomed rapist who's still on the loose. Karen Swenson, Eyewitness News.